All right. Python it, on hardware time. It's time for Blinka, Blinka, Blinka. Okay, we have a CircuitPython 5.0 Beta 1 update. This one has some enhancements to display I.O., Grayscale OLED, e-paper displays, additions and improvements to BOE, and support for STM32F4, the Sony Spresence, and PWM audio support. So if you're on the cutting edge and you want to use the latest and greatest CircuitPython 5.0 Beta 1, Especially if you're doing Bluetooth, because there's a lot, been a lot of churn and updates in the BLEIO library, um, which is somewhat related to the release. Um, we really recommend if you want to do BLE stuff, just move on to five because the 4.0 stuff is not going to be supported long term. Okay, uh, 15,000 thanks. Thank you. We reached 15,000 stars on GitHub. Yay! You can see it's going pretty good. And you can see where we um, did our projects to try to get. That's where we're like, hey, when hey, you folks. when you star it, we'll we'll know. Well, so, we wanted to get to a thousand, and yeah. we did. Okay, um, we're seeing lots of cool Circuit Python based hardware out there. This is Circuit Brains. Brains Deluxe. It's Circuit Python Castellated Module Package. It's from Kevin. Yeah, it's, it's nice. A like a SAMD51, you get a QSPY, you get the crystal, you get the regulator, you get the reset button, you yeah. just plop this onto your project and you're ready to rock. 1.25 inches square or 32 millimeters. Uh, next up, Professor John is publishing the introduction to programming with Circuit Playground. You can see all the resources and more. Um, there's YouTube videos, there's slides, there's everything you need to get started with CircuitPython and electronics and coding and more. Everybody has a Baby Yoda project. This is from uh, Professor John's uh, class. They had to cobble together um, a bunch of things from that were in the classroom and use a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit to create something. So why not make a Baby Yoda? Serpente is back and the family is expanded. The R2 adds castellated edges, breadboard compatibility, and a new board, a male USB Type-C. Um, it's still the same SAMD, 21256K B flash, and 32 kilobytes of RAM, 4 megabytes for files and code, 6 GPIOs, and of course it runs CircuitPython. That's why it's here. Congratulations, Arturo. Whoop, whoop. Building a nice little CircuitPython-based business here. Okay, this is from Amazon's AWS Builder Fair, mm. and the neat thing about this is they're using Blinka which we're seeing all over the place now for things like watering plants, hydration levels. And what's neat is um, this company and Amazon is posting more and more examples on GitHub using Blinka. Yeah, what they're doing is, it, you know, they're using Raspberry Pi with AWS. And they're like, well, we want to connect to motors and sensors and stuff. What has 200 libraries? CircuitPython, Blinka. Yeah. All right, we posted our um, Nothing Ever Ends <laughs> project. Um, but this one, we finished it. This is Sister Night. NeoPixel circuit Python powered goggles inspired by the series Watchmen. You can control NeoPixel LEDs and animations with a rotary encoder. You can split up to four different modes. Um, you control speed, colors, brightness of NeoPixels. Uh, the 3D printed parts fit over the costume goggles and all snap together. And this is a cool photo shoot. Not only that, um, it'll turn you into Dr. Manhattan. Uh, congratulations, Raspberry Pi. Um, 30 million Raspberry Pi units are out there. We've been keeping track of this since about January of 2013. That's when they hit a million. Uh, Two million hit around November of 2013. Then there was some big milestones. October 2014, about four million. September 2015, about five million. Uh, 14 to 15 million, 2017. 23 million, 2018. 25 million, uh, middle of this year, March 2019. Uh, 28 million we posted up around September and now they are to 30 million. That is 30 million chances to run Blinka. Look at it that way. They all support it. Okay. Um, lots of people are starting to play around with our circuit Python libraries for BLE. And this is an NRF52840 LED hat, but you don't need to use this weirdo app that you download that who knows what it actually does. You can use your own software and the own, your own stuff that you make. And uh, this hat I got uh, for 14 bucks. We're going to be hacking around on these. Um, I got it off eBay. And we'll see how it goes. But more, more BLE projects and more BLE devices with circuit Python. There are over 54 entries in the Take Flight with Feather contest with Hackaday, with Adafruit, and with DigiKey. Um, someone's going to get their board made here at the Adafruit factory, and you can check out all 54 of them at Hackaday.io. Probably by the time this video is posted, there's even more. 
we added two more Pi portals to the family. We got the Pint and we got the Titano. Mm. So if you've been looking for a smaller version or a larger version, we got those. Just make sure you check out the firmware builds and all the extra things that you need to do with it because uh, the Pint is the same as the, the Pi portal. The Pint is the same. But the it's Titano is a little different. Yeah, the Titano because we upgraded to twice as many pixels. Yeah. So you actually have to use a firmware that can support, you know, there, there's a build for it in uh, circuitpython.org slash downloads. And uh, Black Portal Library will work the same, but you, of course, have to make sure your graphics are bigger because otherwise they'll just show up on the left-hand side. You'll be like, hey, why isn't it using the whole screen? It's because the screen is bigger. Okay, lots of 3D printed projects, lots of projects using Circuit Playground Bluefruit because you can control it so you can put it on top of the tree and change the colors. The files are up on Thingiverse. You'll see a lot of these ornaments, uh, folks that are building them, and also this is part of Adabox. So uh, one of the popular projects is uh, put a picture of your family and then put them on the tree. There's a lot of um, edge badge photos and more from the ARM IoT Summit, so we did a recap. And this worked out really well because they were able to use machine learning in a noisy environment like a conference. And the edge badge is the easiest way to get started with TensorFlow, easiest way to get started with Sports Circuit Python, also does things like MakeCode and Arduino and more. Uh, this is Diwali with Circuit Python. This is by Anwisha, and this is a presentation about this person's journey in Circuit Python and programming and more. Uh, check it out; the slides and more are posted. Coding Bandit had a time to distress fun stream. This is kind of neat to watch uh, folks use Circuit Python. Um, for fun and for hobby. It is really relaxing to write Circuit Python code. It is. I think. It just works. More tree projects. Um, this student group put all their Circuit Playgrounds on a tree. That's so cool. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's cute. Yeah, super cute. And everyone's got a little bit slightly different design. Yeah. Everyone has their own um, pattern on there, on the back has their name. Yeah. Super cool. Circuit Python comes to Eurac. JP is testing out the Winterbloom Soul Beta. Yeah, this is cool. This is like a Eurorack synthesizer, and Thea, who's been working on this project, has submitted so many wonderful fixes and updates um, to have more and better support for audio, DAX, and I2S in uh, CircuitPython. We think that it would make for a great synthesizer brain. Okay. Um, CircuitPython library for the mini uh, DF player. It's a minimalistic MP3 player. You can get these off eBay for a few uh, bucks or Amazon or other distributors, but now there's a CircuitPython library. Cedar Grove is doing a really cool project. This is using the uh, Pi Badge Cricket Stemma, and these will know where what other devices are attached, and also um, it'll plot where it'll go. And um, the servos will move. So this is a really advanced project, but it's uh, very easy to do with Stemma, Stemma QT, Circuit Python, and you can also do things like audio playback and more. And so, Turtle. <laughs> and Turtle. Um, there is a bunch of cool um, Circuit Python learning resources by Caden. Those are all on GitHub. Um, it's a, a course that looks like uh, Caden posted up. There was a bunch of ugly IoT sweaters this year, and uh, we're thankful that Blinkiv made it easy to make these atrocities <laughs> for the ugly sweater contests that are going out there. Looking ugly. Yeah. Um, we posted up an update to the TFT Gizmo and Circuit Python, Circuit Playground Bluefruit guides. Uh, this allows you to do machine learning. There is a cool new library out there that allows you to control Roombas using the Roomba Open Interface uh, device protocol. Oh, is that why you made this graphic? That's exactly why we I made this graphic. I didn't actually know you made this graphic. I mean, you wanted Blinka. Cats, I... cats used to ride on Roomba. Roombas. Now Blinka's right on okay. there. Um, over on RealPython, there's an excellent series if you want to get started with MicroPython. The OpenBook right. project is going, and if you can hear in the background, um, Joey made, no. uh, this is a Feather compatible, and he's using our TensorFlow library, the one I was just talking about, to do no. um, forward and back, hmm. and uh, you know, next and back, and it does voice Left. recognition on this you know, low power, uh, low cost Impressive. Device. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Not easy. Other Bluetooth low energy devices out there, um, folks are getting the um, uh, CircuitPython libraries and more running on these type of glasses. You see these, these are pretty cheap all the time, and instead of using like app that goes with it, you can write your own software. Uh, we have some learning guides. There's a dreidel that we just posted up. And that is the CircuitPython news for the week. Um, we'll probably be starting our own exercise company that's open source and Python powered. We're going to be calling it Piloton. That's it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Maybe.